It's fast, free, easy security. Don't hear that too often, do you? We're talking about IP Fire, a great Linux distribution for a firewall that can be used in a lot of different ways. And we're talking about where you want to use it, where you don't. Coming up next. Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by CyberVenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. All right, IP Fire, one of my favorite open source projects, still actively maintained, great reputation. It is a firewall, a very small one. I think it's like about a 600 meg download and an ISO. You can put it on lightweight hardware and turn it in for, to a firewall for your home, for your lab, uh, for a small branch office. Uh, it's not a super comprehensive firewall, but it does have the capacity to have different modules added on to it. We're not going to go over too much of that today. I'm going to use, I'm going to talk about more of my favorite use case for this firewall. The thing is being open source, it's being completely free, is you can spin it up in a virtual machine and have a bunch of these little things and use it as a way to route to and from different networks. So let's say you wanted to isolate your backup system. You had, let's say you're using Veeam. You want to have Veeam be able to reach out and touch all your servers and infrastructure that's backing up, but you don't want that infrastructure, which could become compromised by ransomware attackers, to be go back and reach your Veeam server. You could put this little firewall in front of your Veeam box. You can have a little, you can have Veeam running on a small virtual server, put this on that virtual server, and bridge the two networks. You're private, you can put your NAS device, device is, uh, in, in this private network, let Veeam talk to them back and forth, put Veeam behind this private network, and then use it to bridge over to the rest of your network. So you kind of treat it like a mini internet, like you treat your, your inside network like it was the internet, like it's a bad neighborhood kind of thing. And you put this little firewall. If you were to go out and pay for firewalls, like every little nook and cranny you want to make your network, it would be prohibitively expensive and complicated. But this is so easy to throw together. Shame on you if you're not using it for this kind of thing. I always talk about backups and you want to isolate them, protect them. This is my favorite use for IP fire. A good example to show how to uh, access certain things. So let's take a look at uh, down here. So first, we are going to walk people through how to set it up. Now, here's here's our environment. We've got two network cards here. So we have, we're have using it as a virtual machine. We've got using uh, Proxmox as our favorite virtualization stack. And we are loading up two different network devices. One is in our VMBR1, which is our WAN, and one is our VMBR0. It's helpful to note the MAC address is 97AE is our internal. You can do remember that and go to our console and launch this puppy up. Now, there are some drawbacks while we're waiting for this to boot with IP Fire. Again, it's I wouldn't want to be trying to pass an audit. I'm just going to go ahead with a default there. I wouldn't want to try and pass an audit while running IP Fire as my main firewall to the internet. It's, um, you know, you, it's really important to have support with your primary security devices. But if you have a good firewall protecting your environment and you have your MDR and EDR everywhere and you want to throw a little extra security and some al al and enclaves on your network, like, again, your backups, this is a perfect tool for that. So English. And we're going to start the installation. I only need a 32 gig hard drive. Yep, go ahead and delete all the data. Yeah, EXD4 usually works fine with me. Goes ahead and starts building it. This is such a quick and easy tool. I, I really want to share with everybody. Uh, if you have a stack of switches, a VLAN, just layer two switches, no way to route between them, you can use this, stick this on your virtual machine, and route between them. And that's another usage for it. There's probably better off tools for managing that sort of thing, like OPN Sense, which uh, I'm going to do in another video. But this is a, a quick way to set up a lab. So my lab is shared with another office environment. and my WAN port is actually the LAN of my uh, host uh, company that's hosting our little branch office there. So we're going to do a double net kind of scenario with this. Okay, that's it for the initial install. We're going to reboot it now. And then it comes up with another uh, install wizard once it boots. Again, default fine.
All right, so here we are. This is our address we type 192.168.9.1 colon 444. That's the management port. And you can only get to it from the green interface. It's our, in, our inside network. And there's our admin note. This is admin, not root. My lab password. No. All right, so here we go. We have our internal green address and our external address. Now, this workstation, I've changed the IP in order to get to it. And we should be able to do, um, should be able to get the internet. Look at that. Double net is working. Okay. All right. So what else can we do with this firewall? So now we have our basic firewall working. And we'd be done if we were just trying to protect something like um, a backup uh, enclave from the rest of the network. And you can see how the double net works. It can go out and get to the internet and get updates, that kind of sort of thing, and go out and reach and talk to all the workstations, but it hid behind a basic NAT. So it's a basic screening firewall. Under firewall, you can add rules, right? You can create uh, a NAT rule. So if I want to create a new rule, and you can do the source is, we can pick a source IP, so like only a specific machine is allowed to go behind it. So let's say 192.168.9.4. So only my machine here, that, that's my machine's IP is allowed to, and we use NAT, destination NAT. That's IP forwarding. And it's allowed, it's going to go, we want a, uh, we want all protocol, we want TCP. So if you're going to our Actually, no, that's doing that wrong. This is behind. So let's say I have got a machine 77. I don't know, 177. That's, let's say that's a workstation that I want to manage my backups from. And only that workstation is allowed. I can create that there. Use our NAT address translation. Destination NAT, NAT address is fine. Um, our destination address would be right here, 190. 2.168. Let's say that my Veeam server is sitting at dot fifty. Okay. And let's say I want to be able to I don't like RDP to it, but let's say I wanna Oh yeah, I mean I guess we get RDP. We're only coming from one machine specific machine, right? So 3389. Yeah, and we'd probably want a better way to do this. You could maybe VPN in or SSH. Oh yeah, let's SSH. That's even a better idea. Yeah, 22. That's, that's what we'll do. Well, let's say that's secure, more secure. There we go. We can log it so we can see it succeeds or fails. Uh, yeah. It's in connect. Yeah. Probably don't want 50 of those, right? Yeah. Do. <laughs> Add. So there you go. Now we have a rule. You have to apply changes. And there we go. Yeah, look at this. Block port 25 for outbound connections. Um, spams, but such an issue, they automatically turn that on. You can turn it off if you wanted to. You can disable it for now and have it around later. So now it's off. You can send SMTP out if you wanted to. Um, that's just kind of default security thing. So what this rule would allow us to do is connect from our workstation to at port 22, uh, and then we can do an SSH tunnel if we wanted, and then get to you know, 3389 if we want to get to our Veeam server. Uh, or whatever protocol we wanted to use. Or you, you could stick remote PC on it and have it go over the cloud, whatever. However you want to get to that thing, um, this is nice and secure because it's it's a completely different way to get to that network segment that you would have that the rest of the network works. So if someone breaks in and figures out your one method, they'd have to figure it all over from scratch just to get your backups. But that's it. So other features, here's our logs. You get your log summary. Um. You can get to various log settings, play with it. If that is IPS log, see if someone's trying to break in. Um, hack fire is how you update it. You definitely want to update it. And here's our available updates. Look at that. But I can go to and you just click that and go ahead and update. Now we're updating our firewall. Very important. You want to do this on a regular basis. They do come out with regular security updates. So it's an actively maintained package. It's one of the one reasons I like showing it off. Um, is that it's still being supported. Okay, so it finished. 
We went back to our pack fire. It does warn us that we need a reboot. That's okay. Uh, if you look further down, we've got add-ons. All these juicy little add-ons we can do. Uh, Backhill is a backup. Where'd it go? I went too far. <laughs> Backhill is a backup software, I know. Um, there's other ways to do backup. There are file servers. You can do some really interesting stuff. In fact, if you only had a machine, you want to stick IP fire on it to be your firewall, but you wish it that your little home, for your home, like, you know, for a lab or something, um, you can make one box, do a bunch of stuff. It supports virtualization. It could be a virtualization host even. That's one of the add-ons I found. Not that I would necessarily use this for, for most functions. Again, a lot of these are cool, but not practical for what we would want to do. Um, we'll show you a quick list of the add-ons. So here they are. Um, it's really quite interesting. So yeah, net um, core would be a nice one. You can make up you you can use a IP fire as a proxy out. Um, that helps protect you against some web attacks and such. Uh, you can use Tor to help not use anonymous browsing. Various file servers, Samba being the one I'm most used to. You can have uh, wireless access point control for certain things. I haven't really played with that too much. DNS servers, mail servers. You can put uh, antivirus in your mail. There's other free tools in here for security. You can browse through this. It's kind of not, I just want to point out the things they have. And this is our URL to get to this. But it's inextensible firewall. That's kind of the point. So that's it. IP Fire. Not a complicated firewall. Very useful for certain scenarios, very simple, very easy to set up, very lightweight on the CPU resources. You can put almost anywhere. I like using it as a virtual machine in virtual environments, allowing me to bridge from a private VLAN uh, out to the rest of the network in a secure way. You know, just having a simple NAT router, network as a translation based router to hide network away from the rest of your network is it can work wonders for security because you could stick this little thing everywhere. Right, you can use leftover computers. Um, I would not trust it for more vital roles. More of I would put it in places you otherwise wouldn't have a firewall. That's kind of my thinking. Or for a lab, it'd be great for a lab uh, or for home usage. So that's just uh, another little tool that we want to review for people. And I uh, hope that was helpful. And we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cybervenger.com.